Hello, welcome back to Adventure All The Way. I'm Emma and I'm a homeschooling mum of three in the UK. And this is the first of the World War II history series. Um, I say World War II history series, that's kind of where I'm going with this. That's, that's the, the main theme. But the point is how the kind of community spirit-ish and um, eating habits of the World War II era, the greatest generations era as uh, they are, they are um, often known, can be put in practice during this time of public health crisis with the COVID-19 coronavirus. So I, if you've been reading my blog as well, which if you haven't, www.rationing2020.co.uk and I have been blogging about the 1940s. Um, obviously, I was not alive during this period, but I am a bit of a history nerd when it comes to that kind of era of history. Um, and today's video, I am going to be, as promised, making some 1940s wartime recipes. Now, as we've previously discussed on the blog, and I'm gonna talk like you've read the blog, because I'm hoping after you've said, after you've heard me say that, you're gonna pause this video, you're gonna hop over to the blog, you're gonna read it, and then you're gonna come back. That's my hope, okay? So that's what I'm gonna assume whilst we're talking here. As I've said in the blog, um, the lots of things were rationed, and these were all staple items of the 1940s. Quite often, housewives would join queues, according to my grandparents, would join queues and they had absolutely no idea what they were queuing for. They were just like, in that queue and one of my grandparents told me when she was alive that she remembers standing in queues not being told what she was queuing for just be told to hold the place you stand there and the other girls were standing in other queues on various points in the high street in the hope that they would get what they were hoping for which their mum sometimes didn't tell them they were just stood in the queue and their mum would you know flip between them and then buy what they needed to buy um anyway <laughs> The other thing I wanted to show you, before we get into making the potato scones, I wanted to show you something I found about eight years ago. One second. I found this. You're saying, a heap of rubbish paper? Are you mad? No, I'm not. Not mad. Just a history nerd. <laughs> so, this is actually an old school exercise book. Um, there was a cover to it at, when I got it and it said it was belonged to someone called Isolde Duncan. Um, I believe that she did not grow up in this area but she retired down here and brought this with her and I, from what I've pieced together over a lot of extensive research is that when she died her house was cleared and this went to this kind of junk shop that we have in our town and I bought something, I can't remember for the life of me what I bought. Um, <laughs> And this was inside and I got it and several other books with it for a pound yeah so um, you can see it's quite faded and I'm once all of this coronavirus stuff is over I'm going to take it into a museum um, in a neighboring town large town and see if they can help me restore it or at least work out some of the bits on it and I'm also planning to rewrite it I'm going to type it up and I'm going to get it printed into a book. For my own use, not for everyone else's, but if other people are interested in it as well, like other historic, his, you know, amateur historians, then um, then that would be great. Oh, I'm getting a bit of his lighting. So, um, as you can see from like the red lines, that's where her teacher has marked it for her. She's had her punctuation corrected. She's had her spelling corrected. Um, and it's and the where she's marked it, where her teacher's marked it, it's dated. I'm really really careful when I touch it. Um, so the first, this is page six, the front page is page two, so there's nothing before, there was nothing before that. And it was marked and ticked by her teacher on the 6th of the 10th, 23. So that is the 6th of October, 1923, which was before my eldest grandparent was even born. Um, I think from my working out, she was about 15 when she did this book. Um, so that is, that 96 years ago 
these first pages were filled. Um, flicking through, for example, later down the page, she has lots of newspaper clippings in here where she's clipped out recipes. It seems that she's continued, she continued to write in it um, after she left school. And you've got a newspaper clipping here. It's the Telegraph and Morning Post, the Daily Telegraph and Morning Post, Thursday, June the 30th, 1938. And it's a recipe. Good custards give charm to everyday cooking golden key to innumerable popular puddings and sweet dishes. <laughs> Sorry, I had to change my battery. So, I was just looking through this again and every time I read it, I kind of forget what's in it and then I'm like, oh my god, and there's a beautiful poem in here. There's um, a recipe that she scribbled on the back of her shopping list, which said like dog food sugar eggs. <laughs> um, there's to make chocolate recipes for chocolate truffles, marzipan almonds, um, and there's lots of rest. There's lots of pieces of paper, random pieces of paper, um, that I have to be really, really careful with this. Um, random pieces of paper that have ingredients on, but then she's not written what the um, what the recipe is, like how to make it, or what it's the recipe's name is. So Phil and I, when I go through it, sometimes play guess the recipe. There was one he guessed earlier was Christmas pudding. <laughs> and I was like, what's this? And he was like, that's Christmas pudding. And then another one he was like, that's sweets because you do this. And there was a few other different things that he's like, oh yeah, I know what that is. I'm like, oh, okay. So um, yeah, it's really, really interesting. And I'm going to be having a go at some of her recipes because they fit with the era that we're looking at right now and um yeah it's gonna be fun it's gonna be fun however <coughs> a lot of the stuff in there is pre-war so those are the kind of things that they would have been used to eating and then suddenly are not gonna have the stuff to make you know there's things in there that ask for like a pound of a pound of sugar or something like that and it's like they would not have been making stuff that needed a pound of sugar it just would not have happened um they just didn't have it and if they did have a pound of sugar they were not going to make something that wasn't going to last for a considerable amount of time um, and if they did have a pound of sugar available they were going to be it wasn't just going to be for one person it was going to be for several people um a weekly ration at one point in the war for one one adult was eight ounces so a pound of sugar would have been two people's rations for a week um and they used sugar in everything you know you have it in tea and coffee they would have made cakes with it they would have um used it for preserving you know as someone who lived in the countryside like we do would have been wanting to save up their sugar ration as long as possible so they could use it for preserving fruits um and making jams and other preserves in you know after the summer harvest so they're not going to be wanting to make something that takes a pound of sugar um for something that's not going to actually see them through harder and leaner times so um i have just put on a potato <laughs> one lowly potato which should make about four ounces of um mashed potato i'm just gonna use a potato nothing else um i'm not going to use any butter or milk or anything like that because we're trying to save it we're trying to save it so here's my recipe or handwritten i have not printed it out because i'm trying to be as authentic as possible and we're going to use, and i've written it out again in imperial I don't switch very well back between the two. <laughs> I can cook, I can do it in Imperial or I can do it in Metric, but I can't seem to convert as I go. So if I'm going to put the recipe in the comments below, and it's also going to be on the blog, and I will put then what the metric is if you work solely in Metric. So then you can do it that way if you prefer. So I have a scales and digital scales here that does Metric and Imperial. So I'm just going to use Imperial, and I'm only going to talk about Imperial as well. I'm only going to talk in pounds and ounces. So six ounces of flour, four ounces of mashed potato, one teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of salt, one ounce of fat. Now that could have been lard or some kind of animal fat or it could have been butter, margarine, oil, kind of whatever fat you could get your hands on at the time. For this purpose we're going to be using um, dairy-free margarine because that's what I have in the house and then four to five tablespoons of milk. For this purpose, we will be using unsweetened almond milk because I want to be able to eat it. And if I put cow milk in, I'm not gonna be able to eat it. It'll just be my husband eating it. And whilst I'm sure he will be overjoyed at that, that's not fair. <laughs> um, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna just, you're gonna watch me do all of it, but I'm just gonna talk you through it now. So if you wanna 
kind of get ready and do it now you can pause the video you know what i'm going to ask you to do and you can do it along with me if you choose so you're going to mix the flour and the salt together then you're going to add the baking powder and work in the mash and work it into the mashed potato work it all into the mashed potato and then we're going to rub in the fat so like you're making pastry and you know when you go like this like money 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 but we're going to do it with the with the fat so that's why we're going to use margarine um, then we're going to blend it into a soft dough with milk now we wouldn't have had a blender so i'm not entirely sure what they want us to do with that whether you blend it with a fork or um or yeah or just mix it with your hands thank you phil who's in the background backseat driving um with the milk and then we're going to roll it out to a quarter inch thickness this means nothing to me because again i was brought up in metric so we're going to use a tape measure and we're going to measure it out then it says cut into rounds and i do believe i have a scone shaped cutter um, we're going to brush the tops with a little bit of milk and then bake on a greased baking sheet for 15 minutes in a hot oven so for me that's going to be about 200 degrees celsius i reckon and then if you want to add if you want to make them sweet scones you can just add an ounce of sugar which if you're getting eight ounces a week one ounce of sugar perfect isn't it to make some scones i don't know how many we're going to make out of this it didn't say on the recipe but you know let's give it a go shall we let's go and get everything ready let's go get everything ready okay so my mashed potato is now ready it's probably best to start with pre-mashed potato to be fair so like make that beforehand because then we don't have to waste time with you watching me miss mashed potato i'm just gonna weigh it out and make sure that i have in fact got four ounces the potato was about five ounces so my hopefully i will have four ounces of mashed potato Oh, 3.3 and there's still some in the pan. It's useful, isn't it? There we go. Bang on four. And I've still got some left over. I've probably got about a teaspoon left over. A table, no, about a tablespoon left over. Look. I'm just going to wipe that in there anyway. I'm just put this in the sink. Okay, so four ounces of mashed potato. I've got just an ounce of margarine. And then you've got six ounces of plain flour and then I've got some baking powder and some table salt and I'm just going to get some almond milk for the fridge and a tablespoon okay come over here with me and you can watch me do it So there you go, that's my dough, ready to go. Excuse the rhyme.
Hi, so they had 15 minutes in the oven and they were till they were golden brown and every single time I have ever made scones the exact same thing as this has happened. Um, I am going to try and make them. I will post me, do I'll, I'll add me doing that to the end of this video and, <laughs> and then hopefully you can see them work properly. <laughs> I will catch you a little bit later with hopefully the uh, second attempt.